All right, everyone, welcome. Today is day 24 of Advent of Code. I'm Sumner, if you didn't already know that from the channel name. We're just over a minute out, and so let me get my git input script set up for today. Today is day 24, so yeah. We're almost there. Yeah, I mean, it's just two days left. Um, yesterday was, I definitely fell to the whole rushing problem that I normally have or often have. I didn't use the, the slow is smooth and smooth is fast motto for part two. So I just need to do that. Uh, or at least identify that I need to do that. I'm guessing that this will be a, the case. Okay, here we go. This is going to be a doozy. Um, my guess is that it's going to, you know, multiply in the next part. Um, Okay, um, Thank you. 
We're always guaranteed this. Okay, C2 equals E. I'm going too slow. This is going to be really hard. Um, let me just think here. So, Okay, so Um, okay, so how am I going to index these?
Oh, okay, this is wrong. This should be three, one, five, one, you know, two, zero, four, zero, six, zero. Okay. Um, Sounds a little bit racist if you don't know the context. Southeast. Southwest. North East. One, two. Ten. And eleven.
Darn it. Okay, let's just do this. Go slowly. Okay. Um, so east x plus equals 2, west x minus equals 2, y, okay, so if it's to the southeast, southeast, x goes up by 1, y goes down by 1, southwest, x goes down by 1, y goes down by 1, northeast, y goes up by 1, so both these are good, and then east always x goes that way, x goes this way, for west. Shoot. Um, Okay, so let's just see here. Um, southeast, southeast, northwest, northeast, northeast. East. Shoot, that's embarrassing.
Okay. Um, so.
What the heck? Wow. Cool. Oh shoot, um... That seems not correct. Oh, shoot. That's um, not good.
They're always the same. It's not being reset for some reason. No idea what was wrong there. Oh, oh. Shoot.
Yeah, none of these are the right answer. Wow, nice job, Joshua. I am debugging my thing here. I'm wondering if this looks thing is just wrong. Oh, 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 shoot. There we go. Okay, definitely not awful. Oh, wow. Wow, Adam with the first place. Nice job, man. Let's see here. Um, dang, impressive, impressive. Um... Okay, well, that happened. Um, yeah, okay, so this was another Cellular Automata day. Um, a little bit disappointing that it wasn't more difficult. I, I do agree. Um, I did like the novel idea of, of the, of the six, six things like this. Um, yeah, I agree, Joshua. This is not a day 24 problem. This is a day, like, I don't know. I've been a little bit disappointed with the difficulty of this year. I liked the hex grid. That was pretty pretty cool. Um, it took me maybe about a few minutes just to think about the hex grids. And then I, I mean, I then screwed up a couple times on a few things. Um, the most stupid of which was that here I forgot to, I'd hard coded it to W or E or something. And then I also, I also didn't, wasn't doing the increments for both C and S. So that lost me like two minutes or something. So yeah, my input parsing was actually what let me down on part one, at least. Um, yeah, probably would have, would have given me a place if I hadn't screwed that up. Okay. Um, so maybe what we should do here is instead of doing these coordinates as coordinates, um, wow, that, that's not a really descriptive way of saying it. Maybe what I should do is instead of using doing these coordinates as stringly typed, make them as delta x, delta y. I think uh, that basically is this guy here. And then, yeah, I think that's the way to go. And then on part two, this was my mistake. I forgot to add the thing that I was looking at, like the action. I added all the adjacencies, but not the actual element to, to look at um, when I went through and evaluated the automata. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't know. I definitely think this was not a hard enough problem, but I at least, I, I did kind of enjoy the novelty of the whole um hex grids it's not really novel like apparently it's been around you know it's multiple years have had this but it's new for me and it was kind of a it was kind of fun to to think about it like that um i'll probably add it to my standard library at this point you know maybe in like three years from now when my standard library is like five thousand lines long it'll be useful okay um let me just before i screw anything else up 3,900. Oh, I, I should get the answer for part one. Today would have been a good day to actually use the regression test. 
paper for this if I was not stupid. So just outside, I was just outside of the top 1000. I'm a little bit disappointed, but like, that's not, that's not egregious. I, I think that, yeah, that's a bit, a bit unfortunate. Yeah, that's the question for me. Uh, the problem, so <laughs> the question for me is, is how many points do I, am I going to get on east of today? It looks like there's only three other people who are solving now. Oh, uh, also, Mc, wait, did Mc, oh, McPanda just solved. So I'm going to gain at least one, I believe. Yeah, so I'm down one, but then I'll get at least one from part two. But I'm eight, eight back from Easton, so I don't know. Uh, uh, more people are going to need to solve. I'm cheering for literally everyone else at this point. Um, yeah, and unfortunately I can't get in before Colin today, which is, which is sad. How, how many minutes off was I? Darn it! I was literally three minutes off. That is unfortunate. And it, it, it's just dumb mistakes. I, I don't know. Like, this was a, this was a problem. I, I thought I did pretty well in this part, you know. But I just, I just forgot about this. And I did, I, I was pretty proud of myself. I caught myself on this, um, you know, having to, to make a copy of everything and then recycling that. So that was, that was at least good. Okay. Um, let me do a bit of cleanup. Um, So let's pull this guy. We might not need that in a minute. So So yeah, we are going to need a position function. But it's going to be way simpler as soon as I convert this to dxty. Um but we'll do that in a minute. Um And then okay, um, then what we can do is just get rid of all of this. Get rid of P one. Okay, so um, next order of business is to get rid of all the stringly type stuff. So let's see here. We're gonna make our coordinates. I'm so pissed at myself for this. It was, whatever. DX of two, one. East is negative two, zero. Southeast, one comma negative one. Southwest, negative one comma negative one. Northeast, one comma one. One, negative one comma one. Uh, x dx dy x y equals x dx y plus dy and that no longer makes any sense okay I think that's good let me do a bit more cleanup Does the cache help? I don't actually know. Uh, 
Oh, I'm sure it does. Okay. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's get rid of that. P bit rotation I rot size zip. Infer from possibilities. No, we don't need that. We don't need this Harvard machine. There. Okay. So, okay, so the cache is very, very useful. Honestly, yeah, it was fine. Okay, we can get rid of these assert falses. They were just for my sanity when I was trying to debug. Okay. Anything that I can clean up here? Uh, I'm caching this. I actually am not sure if it helps him helps much. My adjacencies function. Let me um. Let me t try it. Like it was giving me a lot of hits, a lot of cache hits. Oh shoot, did Easton just solve? Oh, thank goodness, no, okay. Come on, somebody solve, somebody solve. <laughs> so let's just say 21 seconds versus no cache, uh, with the cache, it'll be. Um, so 20 seconds. So it's a little bit faster, just barely. Um, so who knows if it actually helps. Um, let's get rid of this, get rid of that. We don't need any of this stuff. Let me, let's move this comment in here and then we can move this comment in here. Ah, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, explain explain what's going on. So the input parsing is fairly simple if you do it right. Effectively, um, the input that we're given is this list of uh, locations. Each one of these basically just encodes a path from the from a central tile out to a different tile. Effectively what I've done is I use a uh, a coordinate system like this. It's so I saw that there's another way of doing this. Where's the other way? It's it's this guy here where you um you basically how do I I gotta enable JavaScript for this? Here we go. You have some sort of like indexing scheme that doesn't make you skip two for each X direction move, but this sounded this sounds kind of like how you're supposed to do it, but my brain probably would have screwed this up too. So maybe it was better to do it just how I did it, um, at least for myself. Let me see here. Let's, uh, I don't really need like most of this stuff, right? And um, I'll just go ahead and up here, because I think this is general to the entire problem. Okay, so this problem requires you to navigate a hexagonal grid. There are many ways of doing this, but the way I, ch so, chose was to index the, is to, was to make the indexes in the x direction skip two for each. 
sell. So let me let me go ahead and maybe uh, I'll ask you this. The more canonical way of doing this is is this. Okay, so how am I gonna represent a hexagon in in ASCII art? Oh, I'll just I'll just do this. Zero comma zero, rate right of two comma zero here, and then two comma zero here. So this is the this is basically the grid, and then the, this neighbor up here is rate of one comma one, and then we skip we skip a whole one, so it's one comma one here here as well. Um, and then we do the same same idea, uh, negative one, negative one, and then one comma negative one. So that's the idea. Um, this input parsing load a is um, is basically taking each string and turning it into a set of directions. And I call them chords because I did. Um, <clears throat> maybe I should call these directions. Um, and then this is a list of directions that correspond to the dx, dy motions necessary. Okay. Uh, so here, east, west motions. Um, I go south. Is there a way to clean this up? Um, explicit is better than implicit, I guess. I'm fine with this. This is this is good. Then the dy is going to be is going to be negative one. If we go north, then the dy is going to be plus one. And in both of these cases, the dx is is um is important. Uh, this is very important to remember because if you don't do this, you will get too many E or W's in your result. This is what I did and it screwed me. You know, Joshua, it would be really, it would be really sad if like tomorrow it was like a, a terrible, like all of the problems together type problem. Um, it t t takes like 10 hours, but I, I, I don't know. I would actually prefer that to a small one. Um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being destroyed by a problem tomorrow. We, in, in, in my, uh, in my chat with, uh, friends at mines, um, we were all like trying to figure out a, a good problem that combined all of these, uh, you know, like a, um, cellular automata on a five dimensional plane where you had to find like, where you had to stitch together your problem from like that image on where you had to find the monsters. Yeah. <laughs> McPanda, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit with you. I don't really want to do anything. I'm not going to be doing much Christmas Eve anyway. And I'm really only going to go over to my parents for maybe lunch on, on uh, Christmas because my sister's out of town. So we aren't even going to be doing gifts until next week. So, Okay. I think that's about it on input parsing. I made some dumb mistakes. So, you know, clearly following Joshua's advice very, very poorly. Um, whatever. Let's change this to directions and change So uh, this function is just 
given a set of directions, figure out the actual index on x, y. Um, so this just, you know, we start at zero, zero, and then we take the dx and dy and, you know, add them, add them up and it's, it's, um, it's good enough. And then, uh, what I do here is I set an initial set, of, uh, I get it, uh, make an initial set of flipped tiles, because this is both, both for part one and part two, we need this initial flip set. Um, it's just uh, going to be a mapping of um, of chord, yeah, coordinate to is black. So if it's flipped, uh, one. So this is, by the way, Joshua. <laughs> default dicks in Python are, are quite quite handy, um, especially for stuff like this, because you can just index into them, and if it's if it's not there, it'll give you the default value as defined by this constructor. Um, uh, indexing on tuples would is absolutely critical as well, because this is pause obviously returns a tuple. I see. So Lua does have a default dict, but the default is always nil. Uh, what? Yeah. So with Python, you can specify what the default is. So I could do like lambda true, and this would default to always true. But I don't want that. <laughs> I want it to be by default false. Um, okay, so the the basic idea is for each of the directions, we go, we, we find the position, and we flip it. Um, if it doesn't, if it's not already set to anything, it'll be false, so that it'll it'll turn to true. If it's already true, then it'll go false, etc. Um, and then for part one, all we do is count the number of trues in the value list, in the values of the dictionary. That's it. It's pretty simple. All right, so moving on to part two. Um, part two is relatively simple. Um, let's just test again if if my cache actually is useful. So I get rid of this. I guess I'm just trying to figure out like. I should I should just figure out why it's so slow. This is pretty embarrassingly terrible runtime. Um, my guess is it's just the these set unions that are killing me. Okay, so twenty two seconds with without the cache, with the cache, I think it saves me like just barely a couple seconds. So it maybe saves me a couple milliseconds. So maybe cache isn't actually useful. I'm not surprised. This is such a such a small operation. It's it's not surprising. So let's get rid of it. It's kind of pointless. Okay. Um. How does part two work? So basically, we have a function get the adjacent cells to or tiles to um, the given coordinate and. This is pretty easy if you do it right, which luckily I, I I shot myself in the foot enough times on part one that I did do this correctly. Um, this assertion is unnecessary. That was just a test. Then, uh, like the cellular automatas that we've seen like 50,000 of this year, um, the same idea applies. We have a... We start off with whatever, we basically have to maintain the set of things which are uh, black and which ones are white. That's all that this is doing. And then for each of the iterations, we have to set a new, uh, basically copy, copy that, and then set a new um, 
uh, dictionary. You know, I wonder if maybe the issue is, what if I just use a set instead of a default dict, and then because I'm having, I'm guessing that my keys dictionary or keys list is just ballooning, which is my issue. Yeah, I'll I'll try that after this, after I explain this. So each of the iterations, you how to make a new copy. Then what I'm doing is um, find the set of tiles that need to be evaluated. Actually, I wonder if I can do this and get away with if v, v then Does this does this work? Does this give me the right answer? I don't know, I'll have to wait 20 seconds. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's way better. Okay. Well, okay, cool. I, I at least know the direction I need to go for optimization. Uh, any tile that is either currently um, flipped or is adjacent to a currently flipped tile needs to be evaluated. And that's all that this is doing. And then for each one that needs to be evaluated, we just count the number of adjacent tiles. Um, count the adjacent tiles. And then if the current tile is, is black, then shoot. Uh, what did I screw up this time? Oh. Okay. Um, and this, all this is doing is just looking at at each one of the adjacents and seeing if they're they're currently set to true in the in the in the the flipped list, the blacks list. And then. Yeah, if there's zero or greater than two tiles, then we flip it back to white. If it's white, then and there's two active adjacencies, then we flip it back to black. Flip it to black. And then the it's the same it's the same thing at the very end. We just have to know how many elements are black, how many tiles are black. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's it. Oh, interesting. So this is what, so I see, I see. Interesting. So this is what apparently um, Jack Garner used or maybe, maybe he didn't use, I don't know. Oh, apparently this, this is an actual uh, method. So I used the doubled coordinates method. Huh. Well, this is definitely a really very useful um, little document. I see. I thought about this as well. Cube coordinates. Yeah, I, I, doubled coordinates is just easy, easy to think about, you know? I think. Yeah, like how am I supposed to think about this? It's cool, but I, I did think about it. I was like, oh, I could do it in like multiple dimensions. It's basically like multi-dimensional, but then <sighs> my brain explodes in two dimensions, let alone three. These axial coordinates look kind of nice though, because it's basically, it is just a skew grid. But indexing sounds hard on this, to be perfectly honest, and like getting everything correct. Okay. So there's apparently a name for this. Let me, let me, um, this is called the doubled
other ways of doing this are in the above article. But this is the first one that my dumb brain was able to figure out. And that's really what's important on these problems for me, is if I can understand it, then that's a good thing. If I don't understand it, I'm screwed, and I'm less like gonna be real lost. Like yesterday. Um, okay, so another, uh, what I, uh, one thing that I wanted to do here was I wanted to do a bit of an optimization of this flipped set. By the way, my, my runtime is now nearly a third of what it was, so that's good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use a set here. Um, so if the position is in here, then we will just add it, uh, we'll remove it. Otherwise we're gonna add it. So, so that's all that this is doing. Um, and then initial flipped, this just becomes len of initial flipped, which is a lot nicer. Boom. And then down here, um, our looks set is just going to be just the, the set of the um, blacks and then all the x, y values, and then we just uh, uh, union them together. Um, can I just union an iterable? Is that is that acceptable? Maybe just make this a set. Oh, uh, I'm just bad at, at Python. And here we just need to do AX, AY in this, L in that. And then here again, len of this should suffice. Okay, let's see what the runtime is now. That's not good. Interesting. Interesting. That is so weird. Interesting. So adding and removing is apparently very inefficient. I wonder if the problem is um, that it fluctuates heavily. Let's um, let's just keep track of operations. If you do not deep copy blocks into an else clause on line one seventy, um, wait, what? <laughs> Invert the conditional here. Oh, I see. Just set this as a as a as a um, initial set, and then and then here, basically just say if so. If the, if the, if the tile is black and it's basically um, one less than or so zero less than active adjacent, which is less than or equal to two. I, I believe that's, oh dear. Oh, um, duh. Seems like it's maybe slightly faster.
Wait, why is I? Oh. Maybe I should just... I don't know. That's really weird because uh, it looks like it looks like the dictionary method actually is faster. I'm guessing it's because things flip flip flop fairly rapidly, and having it like in the dictionary still makes it so that you don't have to like reallocate anything, um, or you know rebalance any trees or hash maps. So okay, I'm gonna undo a bunch of changes here. Yeah, I'm 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 surprised for sure. Um but that's kind of an interesting little tidbit. Yeah, cuz this is going to I think it take, took 8 seconds with this. It's still pretty atrocious. Let's see. No idea. Literally no idea. Let's run it with d the debug flag so we can get some ideas of where the time of, of what what the actual time is yeah so this is yeah it's pretty bad i don't i don't understand like these people who are like i'm gonna solve it in like under a hundred milliseconds for each problem and they're they're crazy i mean they're also using like rust or C or something like that, you know, where you actually have a compiler. I mean, it basically takes 100 milliseconds for Python to start up. So, okay. Yeah, I'm just going to leave it as, as is. It's slow, but who cares? Um, I think that's it for today. Uh, definitely disappointing for day 24. Definitely disappointing. I wanted to be at this for much longer. Okay, yeah, um, a little bit disappointing. A um, couple stupid mistakes, but I did catch them fairly quickly. Um, so I think that's it's okay. Man, this was impressive. He literally solved before I even like both parts basically until. Um, <laughs> Basically, when I was solving part one, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, so Josh was mentioning that he's he's uh, wanting to go back and look and see if there's there's any patterns or anything uh, in the mistakes that he makes. Yeah. Um, so I've actually I've I've been editing my videos before I upload them to YouTube, which is which has helped. I didn't watch like. The ones where I spent like six hours solving. Those were just total disasters. So, you know, that was just, I don't really, I don't think that I can glean a ton from those because it, it ended up being just, you know, me trying the wrong idea for two hours, three hours, and then, and then finally giving up and looking up how to solve the problem. <laughs> But on days where I slip by just like a couple of, of minutes and, you know, yeah, I would be definitely interested in looking back. Yeah, the unfortunate thing with this year, and I'm hoping that next year he corrects that for this, is that if you screwed up just barely, like if you just like slipped a bit, then you just totally were out of the running for even like top 1000 for most of these problems. And part of it, I think was just maybe, you know, we were all kind of at some point conditioned to, um, yeah, we were kind of conditioned. I feel like at some point to just, um, expect them to be fast. And the people who are like me, who, when I go fast, bad things happen, got screwed. Yeah, I mean, like, I haven't... The thing about it is, I very... It's... It, it's very... It's very... It was very difficult to maintain any semblance of speed, like, through both parts on a lot of these problems, I felt like. And it was basically impossible to catch up on most of these. 
I don't know. I I've been I've en- I've definitely enjoyed Advent of Code this year, but I'd say it's mainly just cuz I have other people doing it uh a lot more than just because the problems are good. Like last year, you know, I didn't have anybody that I was doing this with. I was just kind of like doing it on my own. But last year I was like very very interested. And then I just kind of gave up after day 13 cuz you know, I didn't want to spend like four hours, five hours, six hours, seven hours, eight hours solving day 14. And then I, I just kind of at that point had lost interest because nobody else was doing it. And, you know, I, I hope that next year we we have we continue this minds leaderboard because um, it's a ton of fun. Absolute blast. Again, overall positive experience, but I would say it's mo- mainly due to um, having this stream and having, uh, a, you know, this private leaderboard, not so much the problems. Though I will say a few of these problems have been actually great. Um, actually, let me, let me just look through, through these. We can kind of discuss these. 23, 23 I liked. I, I did terribly on it, but, you know, I liked it. Um... 20, I loved. I, I did that very, very slowly, though. At least part part one. Yeah, McPanda. Having people to talk about Advent of Code with is way more fun. And it's cool to see, like, um, we're, you know, sharing our solutions and everything on, on, our, um, uh, on our chat and everything. So that's always, that always makes it a lot more interesting. Let's see. So I did up to day 13 on this one. I I after day 13, that was like my favorite day probably of all of them last last year that I did. Like like I said, I didn't actually finish, so there's that. Yeah, I'll have to I'll have to go back and do some do some more advent of code eventually, but that is for a later time. Today again I'm pretty, I'm pretty okay with it. Like, it is what it is. I I needed to gain effectively, to have any chance tomorrow, like three points minimum. Really, I needed five or six points on Easton today. Um, But that clearly did not happen. So yeah, I think I've definitely locked... Like, there's no way that anybody's catching up to me for, for fourth place. But I, you know, a seven-point deficit in a one day is basically impossible to make up, especially when I'm guessing it's going to be a very easy problem. So I think that's that's the leaderboard fate sealed. McPanda, congratulations. Looks like you've gotten second as long as you solve tomorrow. And Colin is just blowing us all out of the water so impressive alrighty um, enough complaining uh, thank you all for watching if you're on YouTube please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and come over and follow me on Twitch I'm gonna be doing one more stream tomorrow at 10 p.m. Mountain Standard Time we're gonna be doing the last day of Advent of Code and then yeah you know maybe I'll stream again again you know one day I'll probably do next year, Advent of Code, but who knows if I'll stream between then and uh, between now and then. I probably will. This is kind of fun, but I digress. See you all tomorrow.